brilliant to have you all here. The start of another exciting expedition. This is really our first chance to uh, to actually launch the expedition. Um, I'm Bear. I'm leading this expedition through the North West Passage. The RIV's never done the whole passage before. And we have this big 11 meter zodiac out in northern Canada and they'll take to the start point for us which is up in the eastern side of the North West Passage. We'll then start us five. We've got a refueling stop in Resolute Bay about a thousand miles later. And then the next leg's about 900 miles and then the last leg across to a place called Top Taktiak. And that's happening this August. We're supporting Global Angels which is a worldwide charity looking after kids around the world. At the ground level, 100% of the funds that we give to a project get used for water wells, housing, hospitals, educational equipment, real tangible things on the ground that transform children's lives and their communities. The real priority in Global Angels is the kids, because if we can help the kids to empower themselves, then that will take whole regions out of poverty, will break the cycle of poverty and they'll be able to turn everything around. When we heard about Bear doing the North West Passage and that he was doing it with Global Angels, for him to get excited about linking that with helping children's projects of children that have been disadvantaged through climate change, it's very, very exciting. The year before last, there was a good ice-free period of the passage for about two weeks. But this year, you know, we'll see, you know, who knows, the ability to travel through the North West Passage over the last few years has been driven by global warming. And one of the things that we do as a business and why we've sponsored this trip is we invest in renewable energy. And we're quite on the limit of our fuel range as well. You know, so those are things for us to be aware of. And I think, you know, the more we're reminded of, you know, the survival side of it and being familiar with capsizing things, the better. It's always a good idea to have a pee before getting into your dry seat. That would be my word of advice for the day's training. We're taking a small rib, two and a half thousand miles through ice strewn waters up there. Um, you know, one of the biggest dangers for us is capsize. And, you know, there's no better place in the world to come and train than at the RNLI headquarters. So what we'll do is we'll capsize in daylight three people. So Bear, if you want to sit in the helm seat, you will find that when the boat goes over, you'll fall out anyway. Keep hold of the foot strop and bring yourself up. Yeah, it was good fun. I mean, it's quite disorientating when you when you go underwater, and uh, it takes a lot of time to get used to everything being inverted and trying to find your way around. I think doing this at night, the freezing Arctic cold water, the ice around, would be um, would be a very different ball game. So anyway, next phase is now to turn all the lights off, kick wind and the waves on, and we'll try again. Finally we have the whole lot, so it's dark, um, there's storms, there's rain, there's wind, there's waves, and that boat's upside down. And it's, uh, you know, so there's no doubt it's very frightening thing to go through and you feel very claustrophobic under there, but it's just trying to get all the crew familiar with it, and the more familiar you are with your know, worst case scenarios, the better able you are to react and get out of them. And we were lucky actually, you don't see it from the outside, but on the underside there's a little light that comes on as soon as the boat goes past the vertical. So we did have light underneath the boat. There are a couple of little emergency lights under there, um, which we haven't got on our boat for the Arctic, and um, come Monday morning we will be getting them. And it's these sort of lessons that are so valuable, how just one tiny little LED light can make a critical difference there. So this is part of the process as well, as getting all of the RNLIs years and years of expertise to help us so we don't have to you know, learn the hard way and that we're well prepared. Probably the worst of all the experiences, actually, Fine. being inside the life raft. Well, it's very, very small, very claustrophobic, and uh, it's uh, you know you feel every every wave. Exactly. There are no points of reference at all. Right, guys, on your life jackets, you'll be able to manually deflate them. There, on the right hand side of that life jacket, there's an orange top at the bottom. If you give that a yank, put that light on. That's it. Yeah, give that a yank. Yeah. 
yeah. like two weeks, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Um, families have survived for what, about 150, 170 days. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. Living on uh, turtle's blood. Yeah. You had to endure that for weeks and weeks. God help you. But, you know, good lesson learned. The lesson of a lot of this is plan well, prepare well, so you don't find yourself in this sort of situation for real. And that's been invaluable. Guys, let's hope it's a resort we don't get to. <laughs> Great job. Thanks. Oh, thank thanks, you, and Eli. Thank you, everyone. We are part of a very cool club called the Cordon Rouge Club, which is a reprobate gathering of British explorers and all the Ellen MacArthur's and Renault Fines and everything. And we always have tradition at the start of every expedition doing the sabrage which involves slicing the top off a bottle of champagne. Now we're looking for the look for the seam. Giving it a bit of a warm up along there. Hey, there you go. Hey, oh we hit lucky. Yeah. And that must be a good sign for the expedition. So here's to the Northwest Passage. Fantastic sponsors, thank you, Future Capital Partners and Future Fuels and Dave Siegel and this is going to be good fun.